Hi, I'm Gareth Green and in this video I'm going to try to answer a question that quite a number of people have asked about, which is this. What does it mean to play scales with shape? Well, I can see where the question is coming from because in quite a few exam board criteria, when you're looking for higher marks, quite often you see this word shape being used. So a lot of people think, well, as long as I can play the notes and you know get the right fingers down, surely that will do. Um, yeah, to some extent, there's a bit more to playing scales than that. But specifically, what do we mean by this shape? Well, it's really the idea that we play our scales musically. What I've found interesting over many years of examining is that how a lot of people, even when they've played pieces quite musically, just kind of bash out scales. It's kind of like, oh gosh, there comes this painful thing where you have to learn these tortuous things called scales. So you play your Chopin waltz absolutely beautifully and then the examiner asks you for scales and you start playing this. And these notes just get hammered out at often an incredible kind of loud volume and every single note is kind of accented. Bash, 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 bash. So it's kind of just processing notes. It's kind of like a musical sausage factory, you know. Instead of sausage, 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 we're getting note, 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 note. And there's no real kind of musical engagement with it. So one of the challenges of playing with shape is actually asking you to say, well, if you're a musician, can you play your scales musically? And of course, your arpeggios and anything else you might be doing. So you're thinking about an awful lot of things if you want to play your scales musically. You're playing the right notes, of course, hopefully. You're using the right fingers if you're a keyboard player or a wind or a brass player. Um, but you're also just sort of thinking about what's the quality of my tone? You know, am I playing the right notes, but actually it's a pretty ghastly sound that I'm making on my violin or my flute or my piano. So am I making a nice sound? And what does that mean? Does that mean bashing out notes as loudly as possible? No. Does it mean I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, so I'll just play these notes really Really quietly and maybe nobody will notice. It doesn't really mean that either, does it? So, um, you know, we perhaps have something in the middle that sounds confident but is not overcooked. And shape is really asking us to make some connection between these notes. So in other words, any piece of music should be taking the listener on a journey. We're starting somewhere, we're going somewhere. We're not just bash, bash, bash from one note to the next. So one very obvious way of injecting shape into your scales is to say, well, okay, I'll start at a relatively low volume and I'll do a crescendo up to the top, get gradually louder up to the top, and then a diminuendo as I come back down again. So gradually getting quieter as we come down. It's not the only way to shape your scales. I mean, you could do the reverse. You could start quite loudly, get quieter to the top, and then increase your volume as you come back to the bottom. I think these are all useful things to do when you're playing scales anyway. You can use scales and arpeggios to practice delivering what we call a graded crescendo or a graded diminuendo. We'll come back to that in a moment. But this at least is a plan to give you some shape. You could have something more intricate. You could have a sort of rise and fall running all the way through your scale, going up and then coming down again. I mean, there are different ways in which you can do it. But really, you notice that when it says something about shape in exam board criteria, it doesn't actually define what that shape should be. It just says, can we hear scales and arpeggios played with shape? But the most obvious thing is a crescendo going up and a diminuendo coming down. OK, now some people try to do this, but what happens is that they deliver the crescendo in the first handful of notes and then there's nowhere left to go. And then when they turn around at the top, they deliver a diminuendo in the first few notes and then there's nowhere left to go. So you end up with something that maybe sounds like this. Well, in that we've had a sort of variety in the volume, in the dynamic, but was that really shape? 
because the crescendo kind of went whoosh and then got stuck. And then the diminuendo went, Whoop, we fell off a cliff and then got stuck. So this is what I mean by this word graded. We've got to think, if I'm playing in this case two octaves, but you might be playing three octaves or four octaves, can I pace my crescendo and my diminuendo over the whole span of those number of octaves that are required? So you must try to do something like this. So do you see, it's much more kind of graded. We're gradually delivering a crescendo, gradually delivering a diminuendo. It's actually quite a hard thing to do. Can we do that even grading? But what are we doing in pieces of music all the time? We're dealing with crescendo and diminuendo. So if we can't really deliver that evenly in our scales, can we deliver it in our pieces? Probably not. So quite often when you don't hear shape in the scales or you hear that kind of rather extreme stuff that I was demonstrating earlier, you kind of realize people are also doing that in their pieces. They're unable to shape a phrase or deliver a subtle crescendo or diminuendo, um, or they're throwing it all at us in lumps. So it's about even grading of that. But you see what you're doing? You're taking the lister on a journey. We're starting down here, and as we get louder, we're journeying towards the top of the scale. And as we're gradually getting quieter, we're journeying back towards the bottom. And all the time we're thinking about all those other things, trying to play the right notes, use the right fingers. In the case of a keyboard player, keeping your hands together, so good coordination, but that's also true for, for wind players and string players, coordinating your tongue with your fingers or your bow with your fingers. So all those things are important. Even rhythm, you know, if you start concentrating on shape, do you find the coordination starts to slip off or do you find the rhythm gets a bit uneven? We've got to keep all those things in place as well. But shape is intensely about producing a beautiful sound and giving us a direction in the scale or the arpeggio so that everything we play, even scales and arpeggios, actually sound like a piece of music. So. That's what it means to play your scales and arpeggios with shape. And that's some of the reasoning as to why you might be asked to do that rather than just bash out notes. I mean, for most exams, if you can kind of play the right notes with the right fingers and you can keep going, well, you know, you'll pass all right. Um, but some people sort of say, well, I played my scales perfectly and I didn't get a distinction mark. That's probably why we're not thinking enough about the tone and this more subtle stuff in terms of the shape. So I hope that explains what is meant by shape. And I hope Rita, whether you're preparing for an exam or not, it inspires you to practice scales and arpeggios with shape in it so that when you play pieces, you can also play your pieces with a very natural sense of shape, rise and fall in the line. That's one of the things that makes a performance really engaging. Well, if you have found this video helpful, you might want to go to the Music Matters website, www.mmcourses.co.uk. We're really focused on helping people to develop their skills as all-round musicians. So on the website, you'll find a huge number of resources. Click on courses, you'll find lots of courses there that are designed to help you with oral, oral tests for exams or oral dictation skills, theory, or specifically uh, targeted towards graded exams, but also very progressive course in theory, writing harmony, if you're looking at a slightly more advanced level, composition courses, all sorts of things going on there. Uh, things that are gonna help you understand how music works and develop these all round skills. You might also want to click on Maestros, which will give you access to our international community, wonderful group of people. Uh, lots of perks going in there, but also if you're a level two or a level three member, you have access to either one or two 
monthly live streams in which I teach as much as we can fit in. And there's an opportunity for live chat so you can ask questions, interact with everybody else. And in the level three group in particular, you can submit your own recordings of yourself performing or compositions that you've written, harmony exercises, you know, musical questions you want answered. So a lot there that might well be of interest to you. So have a look, see what you can find that would help you on your own musical journey. www.mmcourses.co.uk